AK Megabuts, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down and looking at the top 16 deck lists from our most recent international championships, which was LAIC. But before we get into that, don't forget to leave a like and smash the subscribe button, because I'm super pumped to get right into these deck lists. So, let's jump in to those deck lists. Alrighty, guys, and here we are, jumping into our 16 deck lists here, starting off with Lost Tina. I'm not going to spend too much time on Lost Tina. Lost Tina, I feel like, was the just the safe pick for LAIC. Lost Tina was the deck I would have played had I gone to LAIC. I made a video about it, and I talked about why I would have played Lost Tina, which is the reason why I'm not going to talk a lot about it, because I made an entire video about why I would have played Lost Tina, how I felt about Lost Tina going into LAIC. A couple things to note, though, about the list is we have Countercatcher in here, which I think is perfect in a lot of decks right now. It's perfect in a lot of Lost Box decks. Um... Other than that, though, you know, I guess this person opted to play three battle VIP pass and four nest ball instead. They've opted for two boss. In my list, I don't play any water energies. I have an additional jet energy, an additional um, psychic and grass energy as well. I'm playing four VIP pass, three nest ball, two escape rope, one boss. So my list is a little bit different than this person's, but I think Lost Tina was the safe pick going into LAIC. All right, jumping into our 15th place deck here, we have Gardevoir EX featuring that Screamtail and Countercatcher. Now, Screamtail is a really cool card. Roaring Screen, this attack does 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So, the important thing to note is you can kind of do what Cresselia does, but with more damage and a little bit better, I guess, because you don't, you don't have to put a bunch of energies onto different Pokemon like you do with Cresselia to get the damage counters onto them. You just need to put all of your damage counters up to eight onto Screamtail and then attack with it from there. So Manaphy is like your only obstacle to overcome, but if you can deal with that Manaphy, Screamtail is just taking dunks on all kinds of things and that's what you like to see. They are playing Countercatcher in here. I think Countercatcher is a perfect fit in Gardevoir. It makes 100% sense. They're already playing from behind, which is the reason they play Reversal Energies in the first place. So playing Countercatcher just fits perfect into Gardevoir. All right, we have another deck coming up here in 13th place. Or sorry, 14th place with Chen Pao Iron Hands. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on Chen Pao Iron Hands. This was like a huge community choice deck going into LEIC. Everybody was trying to play Chen Pao Hands, me included. It was tons of fun to play. I think this is going to be probably close to our optimal 60. Might be You might be able to switch one or two cards, but the one electric energy is a little greedy because you can never attack with amp, arm press, sorry, but we're never attacking with arm press. We're only ever attacking with amp you very much. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, you take one more prize card. Which is why we play just that one energy there. And then you can, you know, super cold the rest of your water energies onto Iron Hands. Now, there is something to be argued that, like, you could just play a DTE in decks that play Iron Hands. But Chen Pao is one of those, like, decks where DTE doesn't quite fit in the deck. But I think this is a good 60 for this. Your only downside is if you need to attack with Iron Hands potentially early... And you can't because your electric energy is in the prize. You might have to like take a KO with your Greninja or your Chen Pao or something to get the electric energy so you can attack with Ampy very much with that Iron Hands. But that's a future problem. And the chances that you prize your one of copy in your six prizes is not unlikely. It's not uncommon. It can happen. However, if it does you can kind of get around it and just you kind of just turn into the other version of Chen Pao that we were playing beforehand and that's it. The only thing I would genuinely change if I could is I would still try to fit in the canceling cologne just so you can deal with Manaphy because we are still only playing four cross switchers. So I personally would try to cut like, I don't know, maybe an earthen vessel just go to one or maybe you even cut like an Ultra Ball or something, so you can fit in one or two Canceling Clones. I'm not too sure that's why. I mean, like, I feel like this is close to our Optimal 60, but I definitely could see Canceling Clone coming back into Chen Pao. All right, coming into our next deck here, we have Maridon. Now, this deck is something. We're playing eight 
15 electric energies. We're playing the Beach Court Maridon. We're playing two Iron Hands, two Maridons, two Battle VIP Pass. This deck is set up to attack the very first turn you can. It's set up so you can just 100% all in on that first turn, get everything set up, take a KO, and go from there. You know, chances that you whiff on generators is pretty low. You might hit times where you only get like one energy, but you should be hitting two on a good chunk of them at least. And that's why I like this deck a lot. Not only are we playing two Iron Hands so we can try to just pound the Ampy very much as fast as we can and try to get additional prizes and take KOs on things like our opponent's Squawk Abilities and our opponent's, you know, any like weird things that are weak to electric, your Lugias or your whatevers. I love this. I think this deck will be tons of fun to play. I think it's it's just aggressive, it's fast, and I feel like if you don't get the turn one set up and attack... You kind of just flop, which feels a little bad, but I feel like it'll still be fun to play. So definitely give that deck a try because I know I want to. All right, jumping into our next deck here, we have Charizard EX. Now, Charizard EX is another deck that I felt like was a very safe pick going into LEIC. I felt like it's 50-50 across a lot of your matchups. There's Gardevoir going around, and Charizard does pretty okay into Gardevoir. Your only tough problem with Charizard is there two. there's two things that this deck struggles with. Path to the Peak and all those pesky grass counters that were going around. So, like, Mew would, was going to do okay against Charizard because people were playing the Acelgore in it. And if you were playing, like, Arctina, which there's some people that were playing Arctina. There's a deck, I think, in, like, Top 32 that was playing Arctina with Superior. That was something else that was kind of important. And the other problem that Charizard deals with is Lost Mine from Sableyes, which is why they were playing the 70 HP Charmander. It helps against your Lost Mine in your, Sab in your Sableye stuff, and it also really helps against Path of the Peak. Now, the reason this person isn't playing more copies of the 70 HP one and they're playing the 60 HP one, I think is because you are able to attack with this Charmander in Gardevoir matchups. You also could just use the other Charmander that has the attack for 40, 40 damage instead of 30, but this only requires one energy, so I get it. But they're also playing the Jirachi in the deck, so you really help out with that Lost Mine and trying to deal with Sableyes and things of that nature. And you're still playing that Manaphy to deal with Char or, um, Greninja and things of that nature as well. You're playing Counter Catch, which makes sense because Charizard sometimes is coming back from behind. Justified Gloves, I think, was a really good card to put in this. Um, Temple of Sinnoh I thought was really good because if you're expecting people to play the Fusion Mew with a Selgore, then Temple of Sinnoh really shuts that down. But you also, Temple of Sinnoh helps that against a lot of other matchups, right? Lugia, if you run into that, you run into Rapid Box, if you run into Mew, or Reversal Energies even in Gardevoir, and things of that nature, it helps out a lot as well. So I definitely like this list. I think this is very solid. You got Last Vacuum in here to deal with your Path to the Peaks. Um... And just kind of bump and move things and such of that nature. You got Pidgeot EX, of course, as well. I I think Charizard was a good pick also. All right. We're not spending any time on this list. This one is exactly copy-paste 60 of the person directly behind it. So going into our next place here, we have Rapid Box. Now, I did not expect Rapid Box to do well at LEIC, but I knew that people were going to play Rapid Box. So, the couple things to know that are different about this Rapid Box than the things we've seen previously before, it's playing Squawkabilly, it's playing Professor Turo Scenario, and we're playing the Technical Machine D-Evolution. Now, this card is really cool. D-Evolution, D-Evolve each of your opponent's Evolve Pokemon during by putting the highest stage evolution card on it into your opponent's hand. So... It helps out against Lugia matchup, and it helps out a lot against decks that play from Rare Candy. So, Charizard, Gen Pop Excalibur, Gardevoir. All these decks are evolving with Rare Candy, so you're trying to force them to burn through their Rare Candies. So then you can just start KOing the baby Pokemon, the Stage 1, the basic that's underneath that Excalibur, and underneath that Charizard, and underneath that Gardevoirs and such. So this made a lot of sense, and I'm really excited to give this deck a try. I'm definitely pumped. I like Rapid Box a lot, and I played it for a good amount of time, but I kind of dropped it after it just, I don't know, it wasn't my style. It wasn't what I was looking for at the time, and I think at that point I had switched to Arctina. Um, but 
this deck did well and honestly i'm shocked that it did i really am but rapid box out here still putting out numbers still getting the job done with its crazy yoga loop ability and such and things of that nature all right jumping into our next deck here we have dte mu now i had tried dte mu relatively recently um and now after playing it i kind of understand a little bit more of the nuances of what you're trying to do with dte mu and how it plays and the thought process is going into it but a lot of people did not expect Mew to do well because you had roaring moon was a deck that was like everybody was like this people are gonna play roaring moon this deck's getting played guys it's gonna get played but roaring moon did not perform super great i think we had like maybe one or two in day two and that was it roaring moon wasn't a thing really but this list is very good especially because gardevoir was so represented that box like mew does really well against gardevoir because box a disaster you play grabber you're playing avery and you play heavy path to the peak so you sh you really control some of these decks that were going into laic out of the game being Gardevoir and a lot of like Chen Pao back Scalibur. They can't shift re chill anymore and Maridon and things of that nature. So I'm not shocked to see this here. I am more shocked that we didn't see the Fusion Mew version with the Selgor though. I think that one would have performed better than this version did, but Mew is still putting out the numbers and I think it continued to will put out numbers until it rotates. All right, jumping into our eighth place deck here, we have another Gardevoir EX representing the counter catchers and the Scream Tail. Now, the only additional card that is in this list that I really want to point out is Professor Turo Scenario. And we've already talked about it. Put one Pokemon in play into your hand, discard all other cards attached. I think this deck fits perfect into, into Gardevoir because you can pick up your Zacian and you can pick up your Gardevoir and you can pick up your Scream Tail or any Psychic Pokemon that has energy attached to it because those Psychic Energies are going to go right back into your discard pile. And I think that that's something to point out is that Penny would pick them up, but it would put all those energies back into your hand. But Turo Scenario doesn't do that, and I think that fits in Gardevoir really nicely. Not only are you getting a very damaged Pokemon right out of the, out of the game, but you're getting all those energies back into the discard pile as well. So I think that Professor Terraria Scenario fits perfect in here. Countercatcher makes a lot of sense. We talked about that along because it plays with reversal energy and such. I see an additional copy of Avery in here. Um, one less copy of Avery, sorry. But I think Avery fits well nicely in here also. Like I said, I think that this list is really strong. The only thing I would change is I would try to fit in a Forest Seal Stone to attach to my Luminion, or sorry, my Luminion or my Zacian here. Um, I don't know what you would cut for it. You could probably cut, like, maybe the Avery, honestly. You could cut, like, the Lost Vacuum. Those are kind of your options, really. You can maybe go down to, like, one Counter Catcher or something. Um, I just feel like Forest Seal Stone is a card that should be played in Gardevoir because it's it's Star Alchemy. It's just, it's just too good. Being able to find any card you want, it's just, it's too strong. All right, going to our seventh place here, a deck that I did not expect at all to make it into top eight. We got Snorlax Stall. Now, Snorlax Stall is a really unique deck, and I think this deck got a lot better with cards like Counter Catcher and Luxurious Cape. Now, for those that don't know, Luxurious Cape is a really unique card. If this Pokemon, if the Pokemon this card is attached to doesn't have a rule box, it gets plus 100 HP. If it's knocked out by an attack, your opponents take one more prize card. Now, something to note is that Snorlax already has 150 HP. You put a cape on it, it's at 250 HP. That's a lot of damage. Maridon doesn't hit that damage. Raikou can... I don't think Raikou hits that damage either. There's a lot of decks that struggle right now in the format to get to that 250 hit points. So, we're playing the four Snorlax, one Mimikyu, which makes a lot of sense. Rotom for that instant charge in Pidgeot. I I like this list a lot. I think that the battle VIP pass is a little interesting. I get why you would play it. It's just like kind of an extra slot. 
But personally, I would rather just cut the battle VIP pass and maybe play like, I don't know, an extra Ultra Ball or something, or maybe an additional Pow Pad, or maybe an additional Silene. I just, I don't know. I feel like Battle VIP Pass, like, it's just a dead card if you don't have it in your opening hand. But the turn, the times you do have it in your opening hand, my goodness, it's probably insane. So, Snorlax Stall, definitely an underrated deck right now. I, like I said, I put it in probably like tier 2, maybe tier 1.5. But the fact that this thing snuck into top 8, kind of crazy. Alright, going into our 6th place deck here, we have another Gardevoir deck. Almost the exact same kind of thing going on here. We got the Turo Scenario. We got a couple Avery. You know, you got the Counter Catchers. But this one's playing Mew. And things that we didn't notice in our previous Gardevoir list is they weren't playing the Mysterious Tell Mew. Now, I think Mysterious Tell Mew should a lot of times be in Gardevoir. But I get cutting it so you can play a couple additional things such as like Jirachi or maybe a Forest Seal Stone. Because like I said, there's still no Forest Seal Stone here. I still really think that Forest Seal Stone is just too strong. It's Star Alchemy is just too good to be able to try to, I don't know, cut it out. I feel like just playing it is just better. But that's just me. I don't play Gardevoir a lot. So I don't know. But very cool deck here. I like it a lot. I think it's interesting. Like I said, the Mysterious Tail Mew is different. I do like that a lot of these decks are picking up on the Tenario scenario, Turo's Scenario and Countercatcher as well. It just fits perfect. All right, going into our fifth place deck here, we have Lost Box Roaring Moon. Now, this is the best representation we have of Roaring Moon. I did not think that Lost Box Roaring Moon was going to be a deck that we really had to worry about. I know people were kind of cooking it up, and it was something that was existing, but I felt like the Turbo Roaring Moon version was people, things that people were just playing instead anyway. I felt like that was the version people were going to play, not the Lost Box Roaring Moon. But this this deck made it all the way to fifth place with its Jirachi, playing Roaring Moon, Radiant Charizard. I don't know, like, playing Poke Gears in it makes sense. Poke Gear is a card that I've thought about adding into my Lost Tina list. I see a lot of people playing, like, one Poke Gear in Lost Tina or two Poke Gear in Lost Tina. It's just a card that, I don't know, I would... I feel like you don't necessarily need it, but if you're going second you don't have Chorus in your hand, you can Poke Gear and find Chorus, and then it, it's benefiting from that. I also really like the fact that this person doesn't play Radiant Greninja, like, at all in this deck. Um, because they cut it for the Jirachi to counter other Lost Box decks and to counter things of, like, to counter other Sableyes. And you're still playing the Manaphy to shut down, you know, Greninjas and Screamtails. And the fact that Roaring Moon hits weakness on Gardevoir decks and Mew decks... Especially with Gardevoir being the most represented deck. You don't ever need to use its frenzy gouging attack. Which is knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. If you do, the active Pokemon is knocked out in this way. You put two damage counters. 200 damage counters on Roaring Moon. But you don't need to do that. Because you can just Calamity Storm. Discard a Stadium in play. It does 220 damage. Times that by two on Gardevoir. You're taking two prizes. And this Roaring Moon isn't damaged at all. Um... I don't know. I like it a lot. Countercatcher in the deck. Like I said, I think Countercatcher is a perfect card in almost every single Lost Box deck going forward. It slows down on our supporter counts. So we don't have to play bosses. We have a, we're able to play, you know, a Roxanne or an Iono or Clara or Chorus that turn instead. Because Lost Box a lot of times is coming back from behind. I love to see Roaring Moon getting a little bit of representation. Just was not the list I was expecting, I'll be genuinely honest. All right, going to our fourth place deck, we have another Lost Zone Giratina deck. Now, I don't play Forest Steel Stone in my list because I'd rather just Star Requiem. And I'd rather just Star Requiem at anything. I don't really care what it is if I have to. However, this person does play Forest Steel Stone in their list. This list is pretty good. I like the Lost Vacuum in it. So you're able to kind of bump stadiums or, you know bump box of disasters because star requiem does i think trigger 
box of disaster i'm not sure i'd have to read that it might not because i think it has to be like full hp take damage and star vacuum doesn't do damage but um Lost Vacuum is still a good card because you're putting things in the Lost Zone and you need to get the 10 for Star Requiem and for Lost Mine as well. I think that Jirachi could be a card that we play in Lost Tina or other like Turbo Lost Box decks or Lost Zone Kyogre or whatever because just trying to counter other Lost Box decks is going to be a thing that might have to happen. Um, however, just... I don't know. Lost Tina, like I said, was represented very well. I think two Roxanne is still a little too much. I think one Roxanne is perfect. I don't think you need to play two Roxannes. But, like I said, this person took it all the way to fourth place. So, top four, congratulations. That's awesome. Alrighty. We got third place here. Another Gardevoir EX deck. Now, I'm not going to spend any time on this because literally this is the almost exact same list that we had seen earlier. I believe at eighth place. Just a couple things switched around a little bit. Um, I believe the 8th place list is... Nope, it's actually the exact same. So, I'm not going to spend any time on this. We've already kind of talked about everything with Gardevoir. It's positioned well. It was very represented. It was a kind of good safe pick as well. Gardevoir is Gardevoir. You're going to grind out games. You're going to take wins. You're going to take Ws. It's just what a Gardevoir does. Going into our 2nd place deck here. Entei Iron Valiant. Now... I have never tried this deck. I have never played with Iron Valiant. I've never played with Entei. I, but this deck, after watching the championship match, this deck looks really fun. And it looks really cool. Being able to just put future booster energy capsule on things so this thing has... Their, your Iron Valiant has no retreat cost. Entei to be able to take big KOs. Being able to play Radiant Charizard. Being able to Yoga Loop as well. I, I don't know. I think it fits perfect. Playing the de-evolution to kind of slow down your opponent that are playing, you know, the rare candy decks or any Lugia decks you're going to come up against, I think helps out a lot. And I also believe that this deck was something that nobody expected to get this far, let alone almost win the whole thing i mean second place and they went to a game three so there was a chance that this entei iron valiant deck was gonna take the entire laic away from our winner here which we'll get into that deck here soon i'm definitely excited to try this list i've already imported in a pokemon tcg live i don't know this deck seems fun it it's just it's fast it's aggressive you're trying to put two damage counters on all this thing with Techion Bits. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to your active spot, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Any Pokemon, by the way. And then you're trying to Yoga Loop by putting two damage counters on that Pokemon to take a kind of like we see in Rapid Box a lot. And then just a backup attack with just Entei. With Burning Round, this attack does 20 damage for each bench Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's, with the Fleet Foot ability. Little extra beefier than the Raikou. Because it does have 230 hit points, but it does have a heavier retreat cost of 3. But, I mean, I don't know. That's why we put the jet energies to kind of move things around if we need to. We're playing escape ropes. We're playing heavy switch cart. We're playing force switch cart, force escape rope, force switch. Two energy, future energy or um, boost capsules. You're moving things around. You're moving and grooving and you're taking KOs. You're fast. You're aggressive because you're playing squawk ability. You can squawk at C's. You got four battle VIP paths, three nest ball. This list is cool. I can't speak enough about it. I'm so glad that this list came up and it was represented well because the person that played it knew exactly what they were doing when they played it. They knew what they were getting into going into the meta and I think that they did an incredible job. So congratulations to that. All right. Our first place deck here, Maridon with Iron Hands. Now this Maridon deck, I think, was tuned perfectly going into laic and the reason i say that is because we're playing iron hands which was a card that everybody knew was going to be going on at laic it fits perfect into maridon because you don't have to add any electric energies like chen pao does because you're already playing electric energies because you're an electric deck so you're able to attack with ampi very much and i think something else that people added to this deck that was perfect was this zero aura now, this card was played in Maridon before, but it's something that we had cut out early on, and which kind of just went with playing, playing Pikachu and stuff for a bigger pivot option. 
and you're able to attack with flying pikachu for its first attack i think it's like thundershock to be able to paralyze but battle claw if your opponent's active pokemon has an evolution this attack does 30 more damage there's tons of evolution pokemon going into laic especially like other Marina on decks with flaffy chen pao backscalibur you got pidgeot you can ko that thing like Zero Aura was such a clean, good choice to put in this deck, and I think that that was an incredible decision to make. I also think Lost Vacuum was a very good decision as well to put into this, because you need to be able to try to bump their path to the peak, so you can Tandem Unit, Fleet Foot, and Restart, and Squawk and Seize, and all those things. And you're still able to use the one copy of Forest Sealstone, because you can put it on your Raikou... Or your Raichu. You can put it on either of them and it'll still work. So that's also something I wanted to point out. The last thing I want to point out about this Maridon list is we're playing one copy of DTE. And now DTE is something very important to note because this Ampy very much attack is very heavy with its energy count. It plays you need it four energy to attack with this. So you're playing it's one electric, three colorless energy. So now you're in a position where you just attach the DT, you get rid of these two, and now you only need the other two to fill in. So you just attach a lightning energy, dynamotor it on, or you electric generator it on. There's so many ways that you can get the energy onto it, and I think that DTE, just one copy, is such a good idea in Maridon. Alrighty, guys. So those are my thoughts, my opinions, and just... A glance and a look over at the top 16 deck lists of LAIC. All right, let's jump in to that outro. All right, guys, before we jump into the rest of the outro here, I want to talk about one thing that I've forgotten to talk about with our winning Maridon EX list. The other awesome thing that it has going for it with playing DTE is you can attack with Mew EX with its genome hacking attack because it does have only three energy requirements and they're all colorless, so DTE fits in that perfectly. And I think that that was something that i had overlooked because i was like oh you're using it for ampy very much but you can also use it for you and i think that's awesome Alrighty, guys if you haven't yet don't forget to leave a like smash the subscribe button i really do appreciate all of your guys' support all right i'll see you in the next one peace